of people. So Brexit, we had an odd one that uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a company approach us, a very large fresh produce business, and wanted to know if we had any experts in the Brexit field who could advise them as to their strategy for March 2019 ongoing. Um, and so I posted out on social media slightly tongue-in-cheek does anyone have a crystal ball does anyone know what's going to go go on um, and we had a really nice guy by the name of Jim Fanshawe who is at XDDI um, who runs his own business called your export department who although you won't have the answers because who has the answers he's actually got some really good ideas as to um, how he can assist our client bank on how to prepare for Brexit so what we've done is we've requested to, that he come in and uh, we do a short video with him to talk about all things Brexit. So, let's see how we get on. So, Brexit. We've been having this ongoing conversation about where it is today and where it's going to be. And we've had so many conversations with people either directly or online as to what the answer is and no one knows what the answer is so we reached out into the wacky world of social media and we actually found an expert we found jim jim fanshaw from um, your export department who's going to give us an understanding as to as much as we can jim as to where we are today and what's going to happen come march but the reason uh, we wanted to request that you came in very kindly was because of this because yeah. we work with some amazing businesses in the UK and overseas in the agriculture and fresh produce space. And I'm just going to crib some notes um, that the NFU uh, put out next week, just so that everyone knows where we are with um, especially the, the fresh produce act, um, aspect. So the UK imports 67% of its fresh produce, that's almost 6 million tonnes from over 95 countries, with a third coming from the U EU. Uh, fruit and veg uh, form the highest value category of imports for unprocessed foods, worth a staggering £5 billion pounds worth and rising. Um, of the products we import, bananas, as we probably all know, account for over 1 million tonnes, followed by uh, good old apples, tomatoes, citrus, onion, peppers and grapes. Um, and even non-food gin um, uh, imports are significant. I always forget that we have uh, import nearly £600 million pounds worth of cut flowers uh, from the likes of Holland, Colombia and uh, especially uh, Kenya. So it's a, it's a massive sector that we're involved with and we're in a state of flux because we don't know what's going to happen come Brexit. So as I said earlier, we reached out to find you, mm -hmm. uh, an expert that can tell all of our um, ag and fresh produce companies as to how they can prepare for Brexit. We, we don't know what the answer is, yeah. but perhaps the best thing to do, Jim, is, is can you just give us a bit of background on yourself and, and your business so sure. that uh, all of our, our viewers are, are aware of who you are, please? Sure. So my background is in international trade. I did a degree far too many years ago to come out in, um, in, in European business, and, and since then I've developed a, a career in international trade. Um, looking at international global supply chains, but also looking at export strategies, international business development. I set my business up three and a half years ago on the back of 20 years experience in, in, in that uh, line of work um, with the philosophy of being a subcontract export department but um, also looking at international trade consultancy whether that be importing, exporting. Right. Um, so it's a real support mechanism if you like for companies who maybe don't have the uh, the knowledge or the resources in, in, in internally. Got it, okay. Okay, so, so just mention on the sector again, so yeah. the, the likes of the carrots. Um, so yesterday on the, on the BBC uh, News, uh, main lead item that uh, food prices are going to go up by 5% because of the, the bad drought that we've, uh, we've had. And some of our carrot producers in the UK, they've seen a 40% uh, reduction in yield because of the, uh, the, the, the drought that we had. And it, it frustrated me so, so much that on the BBC website they were interviewing uh, people off the street and, and six out of ten people don't know where any of this amazing produce comes from and they don't understand why food prices have to, have to go up. So let alone if we've got our carrot growers with the, with the issue of um, rising costs and the retailers perhaps not being as understanding as they could be, we've mm -hmm. then got Brexit coming, coming along. So if you were one of these companies um, and you were trying to plan for Brexit, what, what would you be doing? What would your advice be? My advice would be to break the whole Brexit scenario down into bite-sized chunks. 
the only way you can prepare for something is if you understand exactly how it's going to impact you. In order to do that in relation to Brexit, you need to understand where does the European Union and the UK's involvement in the European Union, where does that touch my business? Okay. So when I say where does that touch my business, I mean um, are you an importer? Yep. Are you importing goods from, uh, from, the, from the EU or from outside the EU for that matter? Um, are you an exporter? Um, I, where are you exporting to? Do you employ EU nationals here, here in the UK? Yep. Um, do you have uh, foreign currency accounts? Yep. Um, have a look at your contracts. Do you go through contracts, whether they be contracts with suppliers, um, outsource agents, uh, export customers, distributors, clients, whatever it might be. Go through those contracts and see where the EU might be referenced, whether that's in territorial scope, uh, pricing that's being uh, fixed over a certain time in a certain currency. Look at all those areas of your business and say, okay, this is where this is where my business business touches the EU. Yep. Um, if we're to leave the if we're to leave the EU under scenario A, B, C, or D, then how will that impact all these different areas of my business? It could be for cash flow, tax, and, and in the areas I've mentioned previously. But I think, the, to my mind, the important thing is to do it one by one. So by, break it down into bite-sized chunks. Is my Got it, thank you. And again, going to some specifics that some yeah. of our um, clients have, have asked us. Um, well, let's just throw ourselves in there. Um, customs checks, um, are they going to be conducted uh, if we're out of the customs union? What, what's your view? My view is no matter what the agreement we, the agreement we have with the EU after, after Brexit, there will be um, additional admin burden in relation to customs. Um, there will have to be some kind of um, some kind of customs checks. Um, there are things that companies can look into now, like um, authorised um, economic operator (AEO for short), which is like a trusted trader type system yep. for for international traders. So there are systems out there that people can can look into um, to take advantage of, but they take time, so it's important to to, to look into them now. Now, okay, now, absolutely. Um, but also in relation to customs, the, the two things I think really to, cons to, to bear in mind are the time yep. element. So if you're quoting, particularly in fresh produce, you know, if, you're, um, um, if you're quoting lead times or shelf life times for, for product, you've got, you're going to have to start building in possible delays at customs into your, wow. um, into your contracts. So whether you promise to deliver by a certain date, yep. have you built in two extra days, for example, really? to, okay. to get things Really through. good advice, okay. Um, but also, um, yeah, so that time is one thing. The other thing is the, the admin side of things. Yep. Do you have the admin capability within your organisation um, to, to handle the extra paperwork that's going to be, it's going to be generated um, when we leave the EU? Um, whether it's number of staff or whether it's the actual skills that your existing staff have got, do you need to yeah. skill up um, really good advice and okay. some your existing staff? Okay, thank you, Jim. But, and do you think we're going to be flooded with cheap imports? Um, I don't think I don't think so. No, I I, um, I, I think you've got to remember Brexit is a two way. Yep. is a two-way thing. It's, a, it's the UK's relationship with the EU, but it's also the EU's relationship with the UK, and it works so it works both ways. Um, I think UK businesses, are, in my experience, are extremely uh, resilient, uh, extremely strong, and I think with the right planning, um, UK companies, UK growers, will be able to... Will, will so, so, that basis, so that leads on to it's a good segue, because uh, one of the questions we were asked... Uh, do you think there's an opportunity for British growers to take back a share of the home market that's been lost to um, imported products? I think, yeah, I think one thing Brexit will do is will will encourage people even more so now to, to look at the provenance of their food, uh, yep. uh, food and drink, and think, um, yeah, in, in in light of in light of Brexit, can I get? Can I get my produce, yeah. um, you know, more from a lo more local trusted source? Um, and I think that's. Well, we were quite quite selective this morning when we were buying this uh, produce from uh, uh, from from Tesco's. That uh, we've got Tesco's here from 
uh, Essex from a lovely company called Glimwells, uh, but we also had the opportunity to buy tomatoes from Morocco, but we chose to buy, buy them from, from Essex, and we're picking up that from the, the tomato growers, that they are seeing an upsurge in uh, local mm -hmm. provenance, as, as, you, as you say. Yeah, so there, there might be an opportunity for those British growers to steal some, some of that imported uh, market back in. Yeah, I think Brexit will throw a light on, on a lot of this. In particular, um, if people are, st particularly are, are getting more concerned about import duties and, and additional costs being put onto, on, onto foodstuffs, then yes, it absolutely gives an opportunity for, for UK growers to, to say, look, this is, this, this is UK produce, lo lo locally grown, yeah, yeah. Um, no import duties here. Yeah. Um, but, but they've got to work for it. They've got to yeah. be, be aggressive in their marketing. They've got absolutely. to go out there. They can't just wait for it to come no, no, on their door. It's not going to happen just, okay. just like that. It's got to be promoted. It's a message that's got to be okay, promoted so there's, and pushed out. So there's actually potentially a very good opportunity for British growers to, um, to, to push on and, and grab more market share. To shout about their, yeah, yeah, absolutely. To shout about their Britishness, yeah. And, yeah. and what about uh, standards? Do you think with... Um, uh, Brexit, uh, British production standards may be undermined in any new trade deals? Um, no, I think from my experience in international trade, British product, whether it be food and drink or, or engineered products, um, British products have a very good reputation in terms of quality. Um, I think what Brexit will do uh, in relation to standards is, again, it might add more of an admin burden to people. Um, because don't forget, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about divergence and, and, and standards in, in 2018. But don't forget, ultimately, if you're a British company wanting to sell your product to the EU or anywhere else for that matter, um, your product will have to meet their standards, okay. not, yeah. not ours. Yeah. So you're going, to, you're going to have to, your product is going to have to adapt and meet European Union standards, yep. whether, that may, whether they're you know, aligned to British standards or not, you're still going to have to meet EU standards. Yep. Um, so what it might mean is that you might, if, if divergence does happen, then you might end up having to run two compliance systems. So wow. you know, okay. are you compliant to the UK uh, standards and also are you uh, uh, compliant to the EU uh, standards yep. and anywhere else, Russia or, or America it. or wherever else it might be. Okay. So again, an increased admin burden there to, to, to manage to, to manage all that. Great, okay. And, and just to wrap up, it's such a big subject and we can't cover it in the limited time that we've got, but, but uh, again, if you are one of these uh, growers, producers, marketing businesses, what would your direct advice be on the run-up to Brexit in, in March 2019? What should we be doing? Right now you should be standing back thinking, right, let's do a Brexit impact analysis. Let's look at Let's look at all the areas that, that, that we've mentioned already, how that, um, how that is going to impact my business. So am I communicating to my staff? If I do employ EU nationals, and obviously in the, in, in the food and ag sector, then there are huge amounts of, of EU uh, staff employed in the UK. Um, how am I communicating to, with, with them? Um, Am I in relation to um, settled status um, and all the news that's come out about that? Am I assisting them uh, in getting the settled status yep. that okay. they require? Um, looking at cash flow, import duties, uh, export taxes, VAT, how is all that going to impact my cash flow? So break all these things down bit by bit, and you can only do that by doing a, getting an impact, a Brexit impact analysis done. And yep. Then do some scenario planning, say, okay, okay if this happens, if it's a hard Brexit, then these are the changes we're going to need to make. If it's a softer Brexit, then these are the changes that we're going to have to make. Excellent. And, and I'm yeah. guessing that uh, any of these companies can come to you to have that assistance in the way of the Brexit analysis study, that you can yeah. do that for them? Yeah, absolutely. That's something okay. that we've been asked to do more and more recently, is to, is to do exactly that, do, do the Brexit impact analysis from a, you know, a third-party perspective, so we can come in and look at your contracts, look at, your, uh, look at all your employee relationships, all that kind of thing, and, and do the exact uh, impact analysis, and then do the scenario planning once we know exactly what position the company's in in relation to international trade. Excellent. Okay, and the other bit we were talking about uh, just prior to the interview was that this is such a moving uh, beast mm. for people to get direct information uh, from, from yourselves. Uh, you do a regular uh, email 
uh, shot um, giving the latest update as to, to what is going on. And so Absolutely. people can sign up to your website and, and we'll put the details at the, uh, at the end of this article, yeah. uh, sign up and they'll get that regular update from yourself just to give them that, uh, that understanding as to uh, crystal ball as to what might be happening so they can do, do more planning. Absolutely, yeah, visit our website and there'll be an option on there to, to subscribe to the website. Uh, and then, yes, you'll start receiving um, regular updates on Brexit-related scenarios, as well as advice as to, as to how to approach, uh, how to approach, approach all the issues that are raised. Yeah, Fantastic. Absolutely. Jim, thank you. So what we've got here, people, is this situation of a, of a foggy road. We just don't know what uh, direction we're going down in, but it's all about the preparation, the preparation that we all must do coming up to, to March. So leaning on the experts and the likes of, uh, of Jim, as well as keeping ourselves uh, um, informed uh, via the media and talking, just mm. talking to all of us within this, uh, this sector of ag and fresh produce. Hopefully we can all come through and there will be a positive from a negative. Absolutely. Fantastic. Agree with that. Jim, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.